It's another day, yeah. left jab, right jab, this is MMA. MMA Mixed martial arts, quick body parts, undefeated when I pick a mood of champ Who the victim looking in my crystal ball, I predict the winner yeah. Never stop fighting, if you lose, keep your chin up keep your chin Know up. how the game go, I'm a small fella uh -huh. Welcome to the show, this the MMA fortune teller yeah. The MMA fortune, MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. UFC Fight Island 8. We got another event taking place Wednesday. Of course, we haven't even reached the first of the three cards that takes place tomorrow. But I got to get these videos out to you guys. A lot of you have already been asking me. And I'll have the, uh, the McGregor Poirier card a prediction video out to you guys very soon here too. Before we get into this. Uh, you know, if you guys didn't get a chance to check out MMA Live Discussion episode 24 last night, highly recommend you check it out. You know, we had uh, we had two guests that joined. We had uh, here you see it over here. It was uh, we had Brant Moore, an LFA fighter, a top prospect on the rise, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. You know, he, he's this is a kid in Brant Moore. He's eight and one. This is a picture of him when he's a young buck. As you see, he's a white belt there, but this, this guy's a black belt now, and uh, really cool personality. I like this kid a lot. And uh, this is a guy you'll be seeing in the UFC in the near future. So if you want to see an interesting interview, go check that out. Brant Moore, you know, coming off a big victory against Joe Giannetti in, uh, in the main event spot not too long ago. So, you know, some big things on the horizon for him. And then we had Danny Chavez. I know he looks like an absolute killer here, but this guy has a big heart. He's actually a really, really cool guy, really down to earth, chill dude. Um, and I really enjoyed talking with him as well. He has a big fight coming up against Jared Gordon, Jared Flash Gordon. So, uh, you know, that, that's a fight that you, you guys definitely want to put on your radar if you catch my drift. Danny Chavez, excellent takedown defense. The striking looks so nasty in his UFC debut. Uh, so go check that interview out as well. As I said, it was the last video that I had uh, posted um, that will be before this video. So go check that out, guys. Uh, besides that, you guys know you can catch me on Instagram. I got the memes coming at you guys. Uh, go give me a follow over there, MMA Fortune Teller underscore. You know, you know, I had to bring out the McGregor Poirier memes, uh, bringing up the P head and whatnot. So go check that out. Give me a follow. And then, uh, you know what, you know what time it is now. It's business. We got to talk about UFC fight night, uh, fight Island eight, Kiesa versus Magni. Let's get it. So in the first fight, we got a female scrap that was thrown together. Now this is a fight. I think that you guys definitely want to tune into. I Now, in the first fight, we have a female scrap that was thrown together, you know, to, to start the card off. And I think this is a fight you guys do not want to miss. We got Victoria Leonardo taking on Manin Ferrot. And uh, this girl, Manin, 5-1, and one, uh, I hope you guys watch some tape on her because she's a, uh, an entertaining fighter to watch. She's a very tough chick. I was impressed from what I saw from her. The striking was there. She's very tough, you know, pushing her, her opponents against the cage, getting takedowns on them. Uh, she's 5-1. and one. Fighting out of France, and uh, you see her holding some gold here. She goes by the nickname The Beast. I think that's a very fitting nickname. And uh, like I said, I was, I was decently impressed from what I saw from her. She's 30 years old, and uh, she's trying to make a name for herself right now. And, uh, you know, she's taking on Victoria Leonardo. A lot of you guys are familiar with her. Uh, she had a big uh, victory on Dana White's Contender Series where she was a dog. If you guys remember that fight, uh, it, was, it was actually the last fight of Dana White's Contender Series from this past season. Uh, and in that fight, Chelsea Hackett was a pretty good favorite there. Chelsea Hackett's a, a very skilled Muay Thai fighter that gets um, a lot of hype. And people were heavy on Chelsea there, but, uh, you know, you saw what happened. Uh, she got finished there in the second round. And, uh, you know, you, you may think that we're leaning towards Victoria with, with all that talk about that fight. But at the end of the day, um, no, nah, I ain't taking Victoria. I'm taking Mountain. Like I said, I was, I was impressed from what I saw from her. Uh, but again, this is women's mixed martial arts. We'll see who shows up. Uh, Victoria has already shown that she has a lot of heart and, you know, she will show up to fight. So, you know, she has, she's on a two fight winning streak and uh, this, this Chelsea fight right here, uh, I think maybe it looks a little bit better uh, than, than, it, than it may come off when I'm talking about it because Chelsea is a very dangerous striker and she shows some good skills, 
know, some, some jujitsu skills as well. But at the end of the day, she does have some holes in her game in regards to her grappling and her takedown defense. And that was what was exposed. So I'm taking Manin right there uh, to win the fight. All right, in the next fight, we got Umar Nurmagomedov taking on Sergey Marazov, Marazov. And uh, Umar Nurmagomedov, you know, of course, uh, the relative of Khabib. This is uh, the, you know, the young buck that a lot of people are, are excited to see finally get in there. He was supposed to fight just a couple weeks ago. Obviously, he got a little bit sick. If you guys remember, man, he was on a, a hospital bed, so he really wasn't feeling good. If you guys remember that whole situation, um, I think he's he's good to go from what I've been reading up on. Uh, I think he's ready to go. And this kid has a lot of promise. Uh, I've been watching him on YouTube. Uh, you know, there's a lot of these these videos that get popped up from uh, the AKA training scene. And you see Umar out there, uh, you know, really showing to be a beast even from such a young age. He's 25 years old here. I really like this fight as his UFC debut because this guy, Sergey, is no joke, 16 and 3. Uh, you know, he's a wild striker. He's going to be throwing spinning back fist, all type of uh, wild wild attacks on the feet. And, um, and he's a tough dude. He's 31 years old. He has six years of, of age experience, you know, more professional fights, 19 compared to 12. And, uh, you know, let's make Umar, you know, prove himself. Obviously, he's very talented and I'm taking him to win the fight. I just think that he's cut from a different cloth and, and we're going to see that here. 25 years old, we, we could easily be talking about a future champion, the discipline and, and the grappling that this kid has, it's going to be hard for any of his opponents to replicate, replicate that inside the cage. So uh, I definitely got Umar here. I think he's right around uh, minus, minus four to 500 right now. So it's a little high. Like I said, I do think his opponent is, is a formidable opponent. That's a, you know, he's a, he's a real fighter and um, we'll see how that fight takes place, but I got to go with Umar. Now in the next fight, this fight's very interesting as well. For those of you guys that remember last season, we had Mike Davis on MMA Live Discussion. A very interesting dude. This guy, in my opinion, is a, is a very natural athlete. Brings, brings a lot of those intangibles and athletic skills to the table. Uh, I was a little surprised, you know, picking his brain. Uh, it seems like he's he's had some issues, he said, with the... Uh, you know, eating eating uh, cereals late at night and, and getting on junk food, and he wanted to take some time off so he can get his head right to get more discipline with his eating habits and uh, his training habits. I think those were somewhat uh, of red flags to me. But when he's really training and he's ready to go, I think that he's he's a beast. Hence the name Beast Boy. I think that he can give a lot of guys trouble. Seen this guy fight live um, a couple times. Uh, saw him deliver too. He he won the fight that I saw him fight live um, over here in uh, South Florida. And of course, you know, we saw his fight in Dana White's Contender Series in a tough fight against Sodiq. He was the favorite going into that fight. You know, it didn't go his way, but he's since shown that he's, he's a real fighter. Uh, his opponent, Mason Jones, 10-0, undefeated, uh, fighting out of Wales. You know, we've we seen guys come out of Wales like Brett Johns, a guy that has shown to have some of the, the best grappling in the division. I know he's not with the UFC anymore. He's over with Bellator now, but has, it really showed to be an extremely tough grappler and wrestler. And uh, Mason Jones, uh, when I watch the tape on him, seems to be pretty well-rounded. Uh, brings a good amount of energy into his fights, man. Good, good knees in the clinch. Uh, he, he'll, he'll swarm you. You know, he'll drop hands. He'll mix the knees in. He'll really push a pace on you. Seems to be very, very well-rounded, as I said. And he's only 25 years old. I'm actually going to take the dog here. I'm going to take Mason Jones. I think this guy, this guy might be uh, the real deal. But Mike Davis is no joke. So, you know, real, a real big test for him. I think that Mason Jones might be a little bit more disciplined and, uh, and ready to go. The reach pretty much identical. <clears throat> and um, it's a fight that I know I ain't missing. All right. How about this? Francisco Figueroa taking on Jerome Rivera. You know, this is the brother of Devison, the flyweight champion of the world. Uh, Francisco, this guy seems to be a talented fighter as well. 11-3-1. Jerome Rivera, a kid that I really liked. Coming off Dana White's Contender Series. He actually should have lost that fight. If you guys remember, it was a very entertaining fight, but he should have lost that fight. But he did show so, to have some real skills. And uh, he ends up losing his last fight in his, uh, his UFC debut to uh, Tyson Nam. Tyson Nam, we'll be talking about him. <clears throat> but uh, Jerome Rivera, he is a talented, well-rounded fighter. Uh, Francisco Figueroa, uh, I think that he may be cut from a little bit of a different cloth. He's going to have six years 
uh, of an age advantage. I do consider that, consider that an advantage, a 25-year-old versus a 31-year-old. And um, I'm going to take Figueredo just because I think that he's going to be a little bit more ruthless in there. And uh, I think he's just going to take the fight. Uh, Jerome Rivera, you know, he puts himself himself in vulnerable situations at times. But again, a formidable opponent. Very interested to see how this this uh, plays out as well. And uh, let's see if Figueredo can start to, uh, you know, to uh, sculpt his own name in the game. <clears throat> and by the way, the line is right around what, minus 140 or what, what not. He's a slight favorite. All right. In the light heavyweight division, we got Marcus Perez. Taking on Dolce Lingambula, you know, the knockout artist here. Uh, Dolce is a savage. He comes to finish you and uh, is quite the entertaining fighter. Likes to go by the name Champion. Taking on Marcus Perez, who was looking very good in his last fight against Dricus Duplessis before he dropped the ball and end up, ended up getting knocked out. If you guys remember, we had a live fight companion going down. We, we did a little live bet on Marcus Perez. Things were looking good. I think we grabbed him at like plus 135 at the time. Small bet. <clears throat> but um, very well-rounded fighter. Seems to just drop the ball quite often. He has these little lapses in his game. Dolce is a guy that can can make you pay if you do things like that. He can knock you out. And, um, you know, for that reason, I'm going to take Dolce here. I think that he shows up and uh, and I think that he he delivers here. I think he, he gets a knockout. I do. I think he gets a knockout here. That's the route I'm going. Um, but if he doesn't, could be a long night for him if Marcus Perez is able to put it together. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, if he has all his eggs in one basket, we'll see. Uh, but I'm taking Dolce. How about this fight? Sue Madarji, who's been just going in, handling business, taking on Zaruk Adeshev. Uh, Adeshev, a guy you guys remember, he took a fight on short notice. Uh, I believe, yeah, against Tyson Nam, I believe it was, right? Yep. <clears throat> and... um. Yeah, Tyson Nam, and he got knocked out right away, which was very surprising because Adeshev is a very decorated kickboxer. A lot of people have been raving about his skills. He came into that fight extremely overweight, took the fight on short notice. Um, he looked like a little baked potato, uh, you know, wa walking in the cage that night. So, you know, if he comes up to this fight, if he comes into this fight ready to go, I think he's actually a, a real threat to a lot of guys. I think his grappling's also underrated. I talked about his grap his striking skills, but he can actually grapple decently too. He's, he's very competent there. He can stuff the takedown. He's training with some good guys. And um, his, only, his only problem is uh, you got Sue coming in with a seven inch reach and he's been going in there knocking dudes out and he's been looking amazing. Coming off that knockout against um, Malcolm Gordon. Uh, had the big win against Andre Sukumtat. It was quite a bit ago, but uh, this guy's he, he's the real deal. I do think that Zarouk is a possible threat to uh, to win this fight. Man, this guy, he might be a live dog here. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard to trust him and, and to give him another chance after the way he looked in his debut, getting knocked out by Tyson Nam as, as the nasty striker that you are. You know, you would think even if he came in overweight that maybe he gassed out or whatnot. And ends up getting getting uh, hit with a shot. Might have been some UFC jitters there as well. So think about that. And uh, I got Sue Madarji here. Got to go with him to win the fight. Line's kind of high though. Like I said, watch out for that dog. It might be biting on your ankles. Now in the bantamweight division, we got Ricky Simone taking on Gatano Perello, the Belgian fighter. You guys know that, that I like Ricky Simone a lot. Ricky Simone is a guy that has came through when I bet on him before. And particularly the Ray Borg fight. I've hit him on some other bets as well, but the, the Ray Borg fight, he really showed up and uh, and showed what he can do with his wrestling. He can really ragdoll guys in there. Ray Borg is a guy that's a very formidable uh, wrestling opponent, and, and Ray and excuse me, Ricky Simone really you know ragdolled him in there. So he, he was the bigger man, of course. Ray Borg, more of a natural flyweight fighter, but uh, you know Ricky Simone really showed up in that spot when I wanted him to lose against Uriah Faber. He showed up there too. So Ricky Simone does have some holes in his striking game. This guy's vulnerable to being tagged up with the hands. You know, even Borg was able to lay, lay some shots on him as well there. And um, Ricky Simone is a guy I do like here though. Coming in at a, at a minus 340, maybe somewhat high. This guy, Gatano Perella, has shown to be dangerous at times, but I don't think he's on the level. I don't think that he has the grappling to even be, be in there with Ricky. You know, if we see a guy like Ray Borg get tossed around, I think that Gatano Perello will get tossed around as well from what I've seen from him on tape. Uh, he, he may be a little bit bigger in there, but I think that Ray Borg's grappling abilities would, would make up and more so 
uh, for the size difference between that with his wrestling uh, skills that he brings to the table. If you guys catch my drift there. So um, I just expect Ricky Simone to dominate this fight. Whether or not he gets the finish uh, may be the question. But again, also, Ricky Simone does have some holes in his striking defensive game. So hopefully he doesn't get tagged like he did against Faber. All right, Omari Akhmedov taking on Tom Breeze. I already broke this fight down, so if you guys could for me, if you want to see my prediction on this, I'm sure you guys already saw it in the last video. Just go back, go back to my last video, the, the fight card that's taking place this Saturday, uh, the Holloway versus Cater card, and you will see a timestamp there. Just go click on that, but I am taking Tom Breeze to win this fight. Tom Breeze, as long as he doesn't get dominated with the, the grappling early and get finished, like we saw in the Brendan Allen fight, <clears throat> I think Tom Breeze will have better cardio. He'll be more athletic and, and more skilled in there. And I think he'll get that victory. All right. A couple more. We got Lerone Murphy taking on Douglas Andrade. Good to see Douglas back in there. <clears throat> Douglas is a guy. He's had some big wins inside the UFC, even though he, he goes under the radar. Lerone Murphy is a guy that, that really looked good. Um, you know, this was his UFC debut here. It was against Zabara Tukigov, uh, you know, Khabib's boy over there. Really... He really showed up in that fight. He was a big dog, and he showed that he had decent takedown defense. He has some boxing skills. Came back in his next fight and got the finish over Ricardo Ramos. Ramos. So, uh, you know, he's really, really rolling hot right now. Douglas Andrade, like I said, this guy has some has had some big wins. He's 35 years old now. Uh, very physically fit uh, is Douglas. He has very good grappling skills, good striking skills, good power. Uh, he's a well-rounded guy here, but he has a, a major reach disadvantage, as you guys see here. What about five inches, uh, coming in two inches shorter. He's a smaller man. Uh, he's really going to need to use his skills if he's going to get the victory here because he's gonna, he has some stuff to make up for um, with the age, the size, and whatnot. Uh, you know, defeated Hennon Brown in his last fight. Hennon was a guy that even though he, he's younger than, uh, than him at the time, Hennon Burrell, that that's called mileage. That's called damage or mileage uh, to the brain. And that's what happened with Burrell. Too much wild sparring over there in Brazil <clears throat> where... Um, the fight before that, he lost to Piotr Jan. Jan's the champion. He beat Marlon, Marlon Vera. It's one of the bigger fights I was talking about. Cody Gibson, Henry Briones, two good fighters. Uh, also has a loss here against Zabara. Um, very interested to see how this fight takes place. You know, we, we, we do take a look at the line. And uh, right now we have it right at, where was it? Yeah, uh, Andrade coming in right around plus 235 with Murphy almost a minus 300 favorite, which I, I found pretty, pretty shocking. Uh, I wouldn't say shocking, pretty interesting. I'd put it more like that. Uh, there, there are some question marks. Like I said, I brought up the size difference. I think Murphy, if he's able to stuff the takedowns and whatnot, keep this just a boxing affair or striking affair, he'll use his boxing and he should be able to, to win a fight here. He's more in the prime of his career. But Douglas Silva, Dandraj may also have been a guy, I don't want to say that, but you know, may have been flirting with, with some type of performance enhancing drugs back in the day. But I could be completely wrong. <clears throat> but um, we'll see how he looks out there now. You no, know, he hasn't been fighting consistently. Let's see how he shows up. If he's the same type of fighter that, that he used to be. If he is, then he is a threat. All right. All right. We got Ike. Oh, excuse me. Skipping a couple fights here. Tyson Nam versus Matt Schnell. You guys know I'm a big fan of Matt Schnell's. I like the kid. I had him on my show. I shouldn't say the kid. I like the guy. How old is he? He's 31. He's my age. So <clears throat> uh, I, I like the guy, Matt Schnell. Awesome dude. Found out that he goes to my same middle school, or he went to my same middle school for a year, which was bizarre. He was a year younger than me. Very wild. And I found that out doing the live show with him, MMA Live Discussion. Crazy stuff. Matt Schnell, you know, he lives lives in Louisiana now. He used to bounce back and forth from South Florida. Talks about it on my show. But uh, <clears throat> I think Matt Schnell is going to be the, the more well-rounded fighter here. I think if he avoids the knockout, he wins this fight. If Tyson Na Nam connects, he can put Schnell out. I really do believe that. We've seen Schnell get put out before. Um, got knocked out in his last fight. So is Schnell needs to make this a, a more well-rounded type of fight. He has to avoid the big shot from Nam. We've seen Nam be very vulnerable on the feet as well. Sergio Pettis, you know, he, he broke records on Nam's face. Let us not forget before he departed over to Bellator. Um, you know, I know Sergio is a very talented striker, but Nam was a punching bag in that fight. I did capitalize and made some good money on that fight. Had that mix in a parlay. Uh, so some good memories there. Nam has a sick power. We talked about Adeshev earlier. He knocked Adeshev out in, uh, in Adeshev's debut. Nam's really starting to make a resurgence in, in his game. He's 37 years old, uh, and I think that he's trying to make one last little run here. 
uh, you know, finally getting his opportunities in the big show. Schnell, avoid the big shot, use his grappling, his wrestling, get Nam tired, and then uh, be accurate with the punches and the strikes and, uh, and get this victory here. I'm rooting for you, brother. <clears throat> and um, Schnell will be walking in there with a four and a half reach advantage. So he can use uh, the boxing, man. He could use his boxing to... Uh, to uh, score some points, you know, really rooting for Schnell, man. Awesome dude. All right. In the next fight, we got our girl Roxanne Matafari taking on Vivian Arohu. Vivian is a, he's a talented fighter coming off of that win against Montana De La Rosa. Montana has been having a tough time with the Brazilian chicks. Roxanne Matafari is a girl that is consistently underrated and consistently disrespected, and she's made a lot of you guys pay for anybody that even touched that uh, that Macy Barber line. Shame on you. She was, I think, like minus, I don't even know, a thousand, whatever it was, when that fight actually took place. Mata Faris is, is a girl that's very physically strong, and she's 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 mature. She's very knowledgeable with the, her overall MMA game, and she could exploit a lot of these girls' grappling abilities. If they're not up to par with their takedown defense, she'll get in on those hips. She'll keep pushing in, and she'll smother you, and, get, and she'll take you down, and she'll she'll eke out a victory. We saw her do that against uh, Ant Antonina Shevchenko, who's been putting it together all of a sudden, and uh, Macy Barber, and then had a, a nice victory over Andrea Lee. That was a close fight. Not sure if she really won that fight. Roxanne Matafari does have a lot of holes in her striking game. She will be tagged up and eaten up in the feet as well. And I think Vivian uh, will, will do that in this fight. I think she'll she'll strike her up. She'll outbox her. And uh, she will be able to consistently stop the takedown. Even if she gets taken down once or twice or whatever, she'll get back to her feet. She has a good ground game as well. And uh, you got to lean Vivian to win this fight. But again, we've, seen, we've been in this spot before. So be very careful. Um, that Roxanne does not spoil your party because it's possible. Now we got Ike Villanueva taking on Vinicius Mojera. And uh, Ike Villanueva, right? He lost his last two fights. And, um, you know, those were big fights for him. They were in the UFC. He was trying to finally make a name for himself. The UFC is giving him another opportunity because he does bring the fight. A very tough guy. He, he will walk forward and he'll, he'll look to brawl it out with you if, you know, if you give him that opportunity. <clears throat> but he get, he has a lot of holes in his games and and his game and he and he will leave himself out there to be defeated as we saw in his last two fights. Uh, Chase Sherman knocked him out. Jordan Wright knocked him out. Uh, Jordan Wright, the karate, the Beverly Hills Ninja, um, who since who just got knocked out himself. You know it all goes full circle. Got knocked out by Joaquin Buckley. Uh, you know then we'll see what Buckley does this weekend or coming up not too long. Vinicius Mojera. Black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, very, very skilled on the ground, but absolutely horrid on the feet. This guy can be easily knocked out. We've seen him get knocked out uh, quite often as of recently. Alonzo Menafield knocked him out. Eric Anders knocked him out brutally. And uh, Paul Craig even got the submission on him. So uh, what's up with your black belt when Paul Craig is going out there? But Paul Craig, you know, very skilled submission artist himself, but Vinicius shouldn't, shouldn't be letting that happening. If, if you're going to bring something to the table as much as your striking is lacking, you better be, you better not ever be getting subbed inside the octagon if you're going to make it long term, and that's why he's not going to make it long term. And I think that he loses four in a row, and Ike Villanueva, good for him, gets a victory here. But uh, Vinicius can exploit the grappling game of, of Ike's, and maybe he gets a submission himself. This is a fight, not the most reliable fighter stepping in there, man. This this one should be entertaining though. I got Ike Villanueva by knockout. Warley Alves taking on Munir Lazez. Lazez looked phenomenal in his last fight, taking on Abdul Razak Al Hassan, who is on the down skid now. Uh, Warley Alves is a guy that defeated Colby Covington years ago. This is a guy that's shown so much promise. He was from the Brazil Ultimate Fighter Show, uh, but has dropped the ball in, in spots. Lost to James Krause. James Krause, very skilled fighter. Lost to Randy Brown. Uh, that was a fight that he, he shouldn't have lost. You know, he shouldn't be losing to Randy Brown by triangle submission. But Warley Alves has heavy hands, well rounded fighter. Gas is out. Careful for the gas tank. <clears throat> Mjolnir, Mjolnir Lezez is a guy that has shown that he's amazing on the feet. So uh, I think that Lezez is going to be sniping in there. Uh, hence the name, the sniper. I think he's going to be sniping. You guys know I like to snipe my plays on these fight cards. So I think Lezez will be sniping Alves' chin. But again, a little bit of a high line. A little bit of a high line. Alves may be able to exploit some grappling holes in Lezez's game. We'll have to see how that plays out. But uh, Lezez should win the fight. <clears throat> overall 
All right, now that brings us to the main event. I'm excited to talk about this fight. Uh, Michael Chiesa versus Neil Magny. Neil Magny, this is a guy that had had an issue with some type of drug test not too long ago, but it's bounced back and bounced back and has been winning fights after fight. <coughs> Excuse me, fight after fight. Got a little screwdriver over here, but uh, you know, Neil Magny is a guy that he goes in there and he consistently wins fights and against very, very uh, solid opponents. We saw he just took out Robbie Lawler, Anthony Rocco Martin, very tough outing. Uh, took out Lee, you know, Craig White. We're not going to brag about that. Lost to Santiago. Uh, Santiago is a guy we're going to be watching fight here soon too. But Neil Magny is a guy, you know, from the Ultimate Fighter. This guy, Army veteran, pushes the pace, good grappling skills. He's going to be in your face. Has a nice reach advantage to work with, 80 inch reach. He's going to have a four and a half inch reach advantage against Michael Chiesa here. And Chiesa is, is a big boy, right? Uh, coming in at six foot one himself. Chiesa, a very talented grappler himself. I think Chiesa's BJJ is a little bit sharper than Magny, but I think Magny's wrestling might be a little bit better and he might be a little bit stronger in there. And I, I think that Chiesa might be able to, excuse me, Magny may be able to push the pace a little bit more so. Chiesa, you know, riding high in the three victories, uh, RDA, uh, you know, RDA went on a run to losing to those, those bigger guys there getting out grappled. Sanchez, we're not even going to count that. And then we got Carlos Condit, who's been putting it together. Another guy we're going to get to watch fight here. Um, tomorrow night. So very excited about that. And I lost to Anthony Pettis, Kevin Lee, the Kevin Lee fight, the controversy, controversial rear naked choke. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I'm taking Neil Magny here. I think Neil Magny is a reliable guy. Uh, I do think that Kiesa, like I said, though, is a very formidable opponent. This isn't going to be a walk in the park for Magny. And uh, the Haitian sensation is uh, probably going to get the victory here. Um, but I don't feel super confident about that pick at all. And uh, I think he has very game and wouldn't be surprised if he showed up. All right. So that's the main event, boys. That's going to wrap up this little fight prediction video here I did. I didn't polish this up as much as I'm going to for the McGregor fight. The McGregor fight breakdown, I'm going to have some real cool things going on in this prediction video. So I'll have that out to you very soon here too. And um, the, the official picks are getting locked in. I'm locking these in, locking them in for this card right now. They're going to be going out to you guys tonight or by early tomorrow morning. And uh, reach out to me, MMAFortuneTeller at gmail.com, Instagram, MMAFortuneTeller underscore, shoot me a DM. And uh, there's money to be made this upcoming week. So three events taking place within a, a week span. So uh, there's going to be a lot of plays out there, man. Get your value, man. It's, it's, the prices are the same and I'll give you guys a good deal. Reach out to me, all right? All right, guys. And uh, that, that pretty much wraps it up. I will see you guys in the next prediction video, and I will also see you guys Thursday, MMA Live Discussion, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. I got a special guest for you guys, all right? Signing out, the teller. The MMA Fortune Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller.